Hey guys and girls, welcome back to a, another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls are doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links and all that stuff. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. So here we go. Next video in this mini series. We have everything set up pretty much. Now what we're going to need is a <clears throat> SF. Wait, what am I doing? Should be right down here. So I'm going to make a little selector for my mouse. And this is this video is gonna about be about uh, how to use all of this stuff, like what you can do with it. Why why would you need a grid like this? Well, um, usually it's for working with tiles. So I'm gonna make this tile selector vector two F, and I'm gonna show you how to make it follow the grid and not your mouse itself. So I'm just gonna set it to grid size F grid size f all right so it's going to be the same size as the grid obviously i'm going to say tile selector dot set fill color i'm going to set that to transparent all right tile selector dot set outline thickness to 1.f just to have a little outline tile selector dot set Outline color to SF color. Let's just set it to green. So it's a little easier to see. So once you have that, you'll probably want to go down to render. And you don't want to render it in the GUI section. Uh, you want to render it in the game elements. Uh, Window.draw tile selector. Because you want this to follow the view, right? So um, if you're moving the camera, you still want it to kind of follow you there. Um, so there you go. Now we have the text there. That's good and everything. We're rendering it. Now we need to update it. So we need to update game elements. Wait, what is this? Uh, da, 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 da. UI update game elements. So I'm just going to say tile selector dot set position. Now we're going to use something. So if I say I want to set it to mouse position view. What's going to happen? Well, it's going to follow my mouse wherever I go. So let me just try this and let me see how that looks. Hopefully it should be, it should be fine. Not crash. Okay, here you go. So now it's following my mouse. I don't want that, right? I want it to follow this grid position, not my mouse position right here. I wanted to follow the grid position, but the grid position three, three, isn't a it, it will still be up on the top left corner right so we need to multiply this with the uh the grid size so say one times 100 or two times 100 or three times 100 right so that's gonna make it snap like a grid so to set that i want to say mouse position grid mul dot x uh, mouse post grid dot x multiplied with a uh, grid size f okay now f because we want to change it to a float mouse post grid dot y multiplied by grid size f now this is very important otherwise you'll just get the position one one or two two or three three and or four four and that's just going to be in pixels so it's going to just move a tiny tiny bit on the top left but when you multiply it with the grid size it's going to kind of move along this grid and that's how you use this grid mouse position grid variable that we created see so now it is as soon as my mouse goes to the left or right it's gonna kind of see I, it stays in the grid position and you can see that even if i move my camera it's still it's still working and it's not going beyond this zero zero border here see automatically and that's how the grid works for this and we did this in the last videos about collision like i said but um, this is important because here I'm going to now show you how to use this for to cull away tiles. Because when you have a large world with like 5,000 tiles times 5,000 tiles, you don't want your collisions for your character to occur on all of those. Because that would just give you one FPS or not even any FPS. Probably crash the game. Um, and then drawing also. You don't only want to draw everything within your view. And that doesn't mean... You know, I see a lot of people saying when you're drawing a tile from a large, large array, 
all you're doing is checking if the tile is in the screen then you draw it or not now that is also a good culling method but you're still your for loop is still going through all of those tiles to check if they're in the screen or not you don't want that you want to index everything you want to make sure everything in the array um, knows at what index it's at so you know exactly which one to render and then that you can remove everything from the for loop that you don't want to render. So your for loop is not going through the whole map. It's only going through everything in the screen or in the event of the player collisions. It's only going around like nine boxes uh, around this, the, the player, right? To check if there's collision or not. Uh, and to do that, let's just go ahead and make a little um, SF rectangle. Now, this isn't usually how I make my tile maps. I use vectors. Uh, you know, like 3D vectors or whatever, not 3D vectors, what do you call it? 3D arrays uh, of vectors. Very simple, it's just X and Y coordinates, like 2D, and then I add one more D or whatever you want to call it, one more dimension um, for the Z axis. So layers up and down, so different, different floors basically. So I kind of do that, but we'll just do a 2D vector here. So I'll just call it tile map. And give it, and it's static now as well. I never use static maps like this, so don't. Yeah, ten times ten, whatever. Let's do that, or let let's say. Usually, you want to have this um, int map size equals ten. So let's just say map size. And you probably want it to be a constant as well. Now this video is going to be a little longer because I want to show you guys all this. Um, in one video because I don't. Probably don't want to make one more. Uh, so you got the map size. Then we need a for loop that goes through map size. And we'll just call this X. And then we'll make another for loop within this. Uh, like this. And just call it Y. Now this is a comparison between a size T and a integer it might give you a little warning but uh, don't worry about it this doesn't really matter size t i know a lot of you ask me just you can just have int here you know what let's just have an int here to not confuse you doesn't really matter which one you have uh, so there you go now we're gonna go through all of these and we're going to pretty much set that at x at y we're gonna set those so set fill color sf color Let's just give them white, okay? Um, and then I'm just going to copy... No, I'm going to copy this part right here. So I'm going to say set size uh, SF vector 2F grid size F. Now, obviously, you want your tiles to be the same size as your grid size. Grid size F. All right. Am I recording still? Whoops. Uh, yes, I am. Okay, we're good. Um, so once you have the size, you have the color, then you probably want the set outline thickness just to see the grid. Basically, just to be able to see the grid. So, and then you want to say dot uh, set outline color. You don't have to do this if you don't want, but I, I just want to show you. So there you go. Now you have all your tile maps. Now you want to set the most important part. That is the position. So set position. And obviously, it's going to be X, Y, right? But remember, you don't just want to have X, Y because that's just one, two pixels. You want to have X, Y multiplied by grid size F always, okay? Because you're working in the grid. So which grid number multiplied by the grid size? So that's pretty much going to set their positions to exactly where we want them. Uh, it's going to start at 0, 0. Then it's going to start at 100, 0, and so on, and so on, and so on. It's going to keep going until uh yeah yeah until we have a whole our whole grid and then we're just going to render this i'm just going to copy this whole for loop and i'm just going to put it here now, i think actually the culling will have to do that in the next video because it's going to be it's going to take quite a long time um because this is going to be the rendering of the tile map here's where we're going to do all the magic as well as in the update for loop here so i'm going to show you a different way to do this um, but anyway, let's just remove everything else and remove all that and just say window.draw tile map. 
Make sure it's in the view, under the view. No, it has to be under the view. Right here. And this comment should be right here, actually. Uh, this should also be right here, actually. There you go. So you set the view and then you draw everything and then done drawing. Done drawing. Okay, so now we're drawing the hole, but you're looking at this. Uh, it's going through the whole map, okay? And I'm going to show you soon. I'm going to increase the map size to maybe a thousand. I'm going to show you how large that actually is. So here is our, our tile map. And you can't see the green thing above it because I'm rendering it. I'm rendering the tile selector before that. So I'm just going to render the tile selector afterwards like that and we'll draw all of these things but let me just increase this to maybe something that will lower our frame rate quite a bit uh, also yeah I forgot one thing if you're if you don't want your stuff to break you probably want to do window dot set frame rate limit to maybe 120 or something like that we'll just do that you don't have to do it but I'll do it uh, just because I don't want it to go up to a thousand two thousand which it won't do now anyway. So let's just do a thousand. That's maybe a, a regular tile map. Uh, so whoops, I don't know what the hell just happened. All right. So the problem was now I changed a lot of stuff here. Don't freak out. I'll tell you everything about it. Uh, but the problem was we had a statically allocated array, a large statically allocated array. OK, and what we were doing, we had 10 in the beginning. So that's not a big number. So we had about 100 tiles. And when I put it to 20, we had 200 tiles and so on and so on. No, 400 it is, right? 20 times 4. No, I don't know. Something like that. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, my math isn't, isn't great. But anyway, it was a large statically allocated array. And the statically allocated part of it is bad because that uses the stack of the RAM memory, right? The computer's memory. And the stack is very small in computers. It's a lot smaller than the heap. And the heap is used when you use vectors and stuff and, and dynamic memory. Okay, which isn't statically allocated and the heap is a lot larger than the stack. So we can create large maps on the heap, but we can't do that on the stack. So if you ever get a stack overflow warning or error just like that, just like I got, you know that you have allocated memory statically, just like this float view speed that's statically allocated. But this vector is dynamic because it doesn't know its size from the beginning. If you allocate something with new and delete, that's also uh, dynamic. So instead of that what we could have done we could have done a tile map uh, I'm not gonna you know whatever we'll just do an int map for example equals new int map size uh, map size that that would dynamically allocate it but what we did was we didn't have the new we just had int map map size map size that is static and that is not good that uses this small small ass stack so you want what you want to do is you want to create an std vector of an std vector that itself contains rectangle shapes okay so a vector of a vector that makes it x and y it makes it 2d right so each vector position has its own vector going down like this like columns and that's called tile map now what i did is i used resize not reserve because resize resizes the vector for me with the map size so how much i want to resize it to and what i want to fill it with so i'm resizing the tile map the x the first one the long uh, horizontal one to 100 std vectors that contain rectangle shapes and those are going to be the columns so our row is now initialized now i do it in the for loop this one because i want to go through all of those hundred lying like this horizontally and I want to put columns in those and that's exactly what I'm doing here so I'm resizing the map size with default rectangle shapes <coughs> uh, excuse me so there you go once you do that you do a little semicolon and um, then you're in the Y so what we're gonna do is tile map remove the tile map pushback we don't need that uh, and then we're just gonna set everything as usual and it should be fine so now we initialize our thing tile selector all that stuff so let's just run this now we have a map, map size 100 which was crashing before it shouldn't crash now because we're on the heap it did not crash but you see how it's lagging it's like one fps because we're not culling all of this and we will do that in the next video i promise but this is a quite large map still it is and remember those columns that i showed you 
those are let me just do that before we end the video let me just show you what that is uh, so the first vector is basically none of these the first vector is basically up here okay just imagine it being up here it's holding kind of all of these columns okay this this is one of the columns which we which we print out uh, which we make right here okay the y is all every column this is where we push one column okay and for every x it pushes a column down one of these so that's how that works and this is the actual horizontal one which i'm showing you right here right the one above here so just think of that in that sense and you can see that the grid thing is working we're on each of these columns because we're using grid size again always 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 remember to keep the grid size at only one spot only one place where you define it and you always use that variable so you don't mistakenly use a hundred somewhere or a literal value so do that but there you go guys and girls sorry for the longer video in the next one we'll talk about how to cull all of this culling is basically removing stuff that you don't need to use basically so so you get more performance so we're gonna do that and we're gonna look at that and that should be the end of the mini series but thank you so much keep working hard check out the description box and all that and i'll see you guys and girls in the next one all right bye bye